we're recording now. Welcome to A Squirrel Channel. So, we decided to do this first thing while our brains are fired up. We sat here and had a smoke and a cup of coffee and looked at this mechanism. But this little airspace here is keeping my boards for the bridge from being square. So this guy here has to come up. Yeah, lay this bar down and this one's touching. But the way that these one. things work is you lift this one and that end is going to be out of adjustment. So we're not going to take you through the whole process, but you can see we have to figure out the bolt here is, you know, there's no threads in this part which is attached to this. So this is the adjustment on this which needs its little stud, but I've never had it fall out, but we're going to get that when we go to Tacoma Screw next. Yeah. So, I'm thinking, loosen this one, this one, and this, I already loosened. And so in order to get this to come up, this is the end of a bolt. That's the head of the bolt. It's not a nut. So I'm going to hold this one. And if I tighten this up, this way, it is going to push more of this bolt head down onto here, and it's going to lift Provided this one was loose enough. So this will be the... After we get it all adjusted right, then we'll tighten all these up so they don't come loose. Right. Nuts are kind of rusted, and I'm using a 14 millimeter and a 19, which JJ Zap will remind me are almost the same. I see it rising up. Almost. Jenna Snicken, don't go overboard. Don't go too far, Brian. And this one here is now messing with us because... Oh, it's just a mechanical world that you don't want to do after a Saturday night bonfire with the neighbors who invited us over. It was fun. We, we do need that social world. We do. Sometimes. Tell a few stories. So this was getting tightened. And yep. Looking pretty close. But I think we'll see that's close. This one. There's still like a little gap. Jenny's feeling, and then we'll go over here. And what does it look like? And there we got just a little tight. And this one is just a little loose, but. And 
it's, it's seeming close. This is just a little tight right there, which is going to cut. You know, if that's tight, then this is loose. So we're going to go back to adjusting that. But I want a Jenner to stand up, come yep. on behind. She was also drinking her coffee and saying, "Well, what's this?" Yeah. So the way this is engineered, so if you come this go around. Way, no, right here, right here. Okay. This piece of steel is going to impact on this piece of steel, and that's what locks it at 90. So this is just a brace to keep it from falling over. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Now we're going to wander over this way while I talk about we're Look all at this gorgeous cedar. very much saying, you know, the world's gone to hell and oh, in the old days when we had big stacks of catalogs at the auto parts store and competent people that could find you the right part number. So this is kind of my the old days story I wanted to share. Share. What's this, Brian? This is a fire truck ladder truck. That probably will never be restored. Restored, but this is the man cab, and it goes back there. I think they call it a suicide seat or something. But it's got an electric windshield wiper. Mm-hmm. So. This power runs down there and you plug in for the wipers, but you can see this little hinge arrangement is supposed to come back here. two brackets. So you get to the fire and you fold the entire seat, steering wheel, and windshield off and it probably has something to do with these springs. It's going to hold it off, then the ladder goes up. The steering wheel attaches to this, which goes down into this mechanism. You can't see all this stuff, but it's going to allow the back person to steer the rear wheels. So when you get there, the shaft for the steering wheel stays in this part of the truck, but the wheel separated from the shaft, and we're off and running. Huh. The frustration of all of this technology and stuff done half-acid is what I wanted to talk about. In I'm going to tell this story of the neighbor. He's an elderly gentleman my age. His son has a roofing business. And I like sharing these funny stories. The old guy on the job, the dad, he's going around at the end of the day picking up nails, thinking, well, I'll be frugal. We, we don't need to throw these nails away. And 
he's throwing, he's, pick, he's picking them up off the job site all over the ground, put, throwing them back in the box. And this goes on for a month. And finally, the guy putting on the roof says, boy, I've never seen so many screwed up nails in a box before. And the dad had to admit to the worker, well, what do you do with the bad nails when you find the bad ones? You're having to look at every nail before you put it on the roof. He's, I throw it on the ground. <laughs> so, a funny story worth telling if you, right. you caught that. Let's call that a video and we'll take up some of the hydraulics that this machine was capable of producing and having at an era that you wouldn't think would be using hydraulics, but I of course have my Ford Tractor 1959, it has an automatic transmission, it has hydraulic cylinders. Should we walk over there? I think so. Yeah. So, what we're trying to do is take all these boards and these are going to be the slats. Well, this machine here found on the side of the road we got running. You're taking one of these two by sixes. It goes past here. This is a joiner. It's screwed up, missing this set of teeth. But basically this hardened steel cutter and this hardened steel cutter are still with us. So that is going to get rid of all the you know, knots and oddities and make, when you put it on the fence on the table saw, is going to make your first cut up against the fence be true and straight because the level here mm -hmm. and the level here are just slightly different. This comes in lower. It goes into the teeth and comes out at the same height as the top of the teeth. So you're just taking your board and this ends up being pretty damn perfectly straight and flat. Mm -hmm. This little spring needs to be re-put on, but we live in a fantastic world of engineered, high quality stuff with adjustments and you don't have the skills to take them on stuff, you just throw it away and Brian and Jenna take it home and that's where we get all this crap. A tractor forum says, oh, this single armed bandit loader is looks like it'd be pretty tippy. And it does act a little bit that way, but in response to that derogatory comment, somebody says, well, yeah, it might be a little tippy, but this cylinder here and this can pick up a Ford Pinto. <laughs> so, it has power steering. Nineteen fifty-nine folks were not doing too bad. It has these hydraulic hoses and those three controls. One is for the up down. This arrangement, this point, this point, and this point is the three-point hitch. So 
these guys move up and down hydraulically. It's mounted down here, and that's what you're referring to on the back end of a tractor, a three-point technology. And this is what they refer to as the PTO. It spins under the engine power, so not hydraulic. And Farming 101 is keep people away from this because of the incredible amount of injuries that this little spinning gizmo has hurt people. So that's, that seems like a decent video. When I got this tractor, the guy says, oh, let me go get you the seat. And this thing was in pristine condition. He had put the seat aside because he didn't want somebody to steal it. Mm -hmm. So... I think I've had this a while, <laughs> due to the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jenna, put some degreaser on the engine, and we got a new toy recently. <laughs> Our throwaway society, but we dinked on it, and it is an electric power washer. Pretty weak, but it's quiet. And it's great for small little tasks. And uh, it doesn't wake up the neighbors right. bright and early. Right. So it is actually useful. We got it hooked up to a water pump and a rain barrel from the gutter on the building over here. So that's... Yeah. Saves that's having the hose. to hook up a garden hose. Hose all the way over there. Plug that in. And then go. And this is what the garden looks like springtime. Garlic's looking good. Got some carrots under cover, parsnips under cover. And that first row overwintered. The celery did fine. There's some lettuces that I planted last winter. They're popping up. And we've got peas a couple inches off the ground in the front. We created a drainage that has a pipe in there and this rock pile, so yep. we can drain off some of the water. And <clears throat> I think it's helping yes. that it's not the pool of water that we have seen. In the past, you just step in and fall. So, um, yeah, drainage in the back has been helpful, and we mined out the roots from these big trees that were migrating into the garden. Not sure if you can see, but either way, we put in a guardrail so that the roots won't mine under the fence line into the garden to get at the good stuff. All the biochar and minerals we're putting in. And we're <coughs> not no-tilling. We are rototilling because... Yep. We want to keep incorporating down deep into this very clay, very poor soil, all of our biochar and biomass, the grass cutting, we mix with charcoal and urine, and we want to lay that out here before spring planting. We can kill some of these weeds that made it through because we didn't cover crop right. in the fall. We can kill off some of the weeds we don't, so we don't have to fight them, but mostly we're still doing the tilling to incorporate the charcoal into. Right. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, and happy spring.